Hey guys, welcome back to customcomputing.ca. Um, so here's an update of uh, the contest winner. Um, the contest winner is going to go to Glenn Wooten. Uh, thank you so much for your comments. Um, and you will be receiving a message from me and I will ship out this, uh, this uh, dual res from XSPC. Now, I originally said this was a brand new res. Unfortunately, um, I ended up using it, so it's not brand new, but it looks brand new. So uh, it has been used once, so that you know it works. As well, uh, I will be sending you uh, 10 um, one half inch ID fittings, barb fittings. They're used as well. Uh, you can decide to use them if you wish in a, in a, in a build or, or what have you. Um, as well as I'm going to be sending this 120 millimeter fan um, insignia um just a it's an acrylic panel that uh, you can you can use or use to jazz up a, a computer of your wish so anyways uh congratulations uh glenn and i'll be contacting you and shipping this out uh within the next week or so uh with that said uh i have this glacier build that i'm going to be demonstrating so uh, it's going to be quite a long video um, i'm going from start to finish with the entire build so grab your popcorn and sit down for probably 35 to 40 minutes and uh, watch my video if you wish. Thanks. Okay, so let's get started. This build is a client build. And one of the best things about uh, the client that I've had so far is they've really let me use my own imagination and uh, use kind of a build that I would like to see happen. Um, the stipulations of this build are he wanted to use a GTX 780 and it needed to be quote unquote bling. So I've never done a white build. I've always wanted to do a white and blue build, um, but there was also a budget for this. So we took a look at all the white cases and this thermal tape case is only around 50 to 60 bucks and it's a mid-sized tower case. Um, the interiors of it are all black, uh, and I had an idea of taking everything out, drumming out the front hard drive cages, and uh, making a big window mod. At first I thought there would be room at the top for a 240 rad, but this is not the case. It barely fits um, 140 millimeter fans. Uh, I do enjoy working with smaller cases. This allows me to optimize the space and without those hard drive cages there, I was envisioning a either a 240 rad or a 140 rad. The side panel of this is extremely ugly and useless. The first thing I was going to do is, is just cut it right out. Um, he wanted to see a lot of the computer and the components, which is half of customizing it. So uh, with this being beveled out, it was really easy to cut out uh, a portion of a big portion of the window and uh, we we're going to fasten a nice piece of acrylic onto it the big window mod on most of my um, custom builds is pretty much well i make them as big as you can without hindering the uh, rigidity of the side panel this side panel already has a pretty weak uh, base as it's only a $60 case. So what I would have to do is make sure that the acrylic is a little bit thicker than what I used to use. Um, and so right away, I the first thing I did on this case was start to cut out the window. Now, with all my mods, uh, everything is done by hand. I don't have any uh, big equipment to, to do anything. So pretty much well, everything is done with a hand Dremel. Um, Obviously, it's not as professional as it can be, but it also gives me um, pretty much well micromanagement of, of all the cuts and, and what have you. And after I sand it down, then it looks pretty straight if I can get it that way. Um, this actually ends up being a major feature of the build. Um, I'm not too sure why Thermaltake had it the way it was, but uh, I think I've improved it significantly. And uh, you'll see that later on in the build. So as you can see here, I followed the outline of a with a little bit of the bevel. Um, 
you can tell that there's going to be uh, the plastic is going to be inset and so that allows me to use a thicker acrylic uh, which will also maintain its structure and rigidity of the side panel because it's already a pretty thin aluminum but it's looking good so far the next thing I want to do is cut out the the drive bays um, I wanted to see whether or not I could put a 240 rad in the front um, I've done this with my uh, reanimation build on two Antex um, and in fact with the Antec Nano 1 900 um, also you could probably put a 360 in the front that's how tall it is now this 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 case is a lot smaller than that and it turns out I was only able to put in a um, a 140 so I decided to go with a thick 140 in push pull config and that is more than sufficient for just the CPU cooling which is what we're going to be doing. Once I had the front drive cages out it seriously opened up the case immensely. Um, it really made the case a lot more functional and I'm not too sure why every company feels as though they need to line half the case with eight to ten drive bays uh, when in reality you can just go ahead and buy you know two four terabyte drives or what have you and uh, w what else could you possibly need this isn't a server case nobody's going to use this as a NAS case so um, what we were planning on doing is just putting a uh, SSD uh, and the actual um, radiator in the front and uh, that should be fine so as I was measuring, uh, there was already provisions for a 140 millimeter fan uh, at the front of the case. However, there, the current layout of it um, cut off quite a bit of the airflow to the 140 millimeter uh, fan. As you can see, there's quite a bit of um, metal blocking on the fans. So you can see on the left hand and the right hand side there. I'm going to have to dremel out um, just so the fan can actually breathe and uh, we're going to cut that piece right out and be able to attach it so that there's no hindrance on the um, airflow in this case. So once I had that cut out I could see exactly where the rad was going to sit as well as the push-pull config and there's more than enough room for there to be a push-pull config on this. Uh, these were the only two major mods that I ended up having to do for this case, which is uh, quite new for me. I'm used to spending uh, the majority of my time cutting and fabricating the entire case, but in this situation, um, the majority of the time was actually spent on uh, painting. So after I did these two mods, um, it was pretty much all just paint and go. Now. One of the things I really enjoyed about this case is that it's very simple. Uh, it's small form factor, it's simple. Uh, the thing I really didn't like is how the interior is black and that's really gonna take away from the look. Uh, if you're gonna have a white case, uh, the interior being black really doesn't let the components shine off the back end and it really actually makes it look a lot smaller. Um, because this is already a small case, I needed to open up the interior to make it perceive bigger than it actually is. Um, and so for the first time ever, I actually dismantled uh, the case. Um, it was held together with rivets, and I dismantled the top and bottom parts of the case. I've never actually done this before, and uh, I do have a, a rivet gun, so that... I knew I can put it back together and uh, pretty much well just get ready to the paint. So I could have gone all the way to taking every panel off but I didn't feel the need to do that in this case. Um, after I got it up and hung it up against uh, in my basement I realized that I was able to you know paint pretty much well every nick and cranny that I needed to. Um, this is after the first coat of white paint and I was using a semi-gloss paint and it's actually quite liquidy. Um, 
it, it went on pretty thick and I ended up having to do three coats, uh, four coats of paint and two coats of lacquer. Once I had it done with the painting, I was quite surprised at the, the amount of brightness that it brought to the table. Um, it really changed the look of the case and uh, really, really impressed impressed me with the vibrant white. Um, this isn't really doing it justice, but uh, as well as you can see some shadows, those uh, that's not actual black paint, it's just the, the shadows, but it really, really changed the entire look and feel of the case. Just having that black was just not acceptable. Once I put the top and bottom panels back in and riveted them into the case, the white, uh, one thing I was worried about was the two whites were going to be off. But in fact, the matching of the white was uncanny. In fact, you can almost not even tell that there is, there are different whites. Um, it basically made this build, um, painting it white. And uh, you'll see a little later on what kind of mode I was going for with the all white slash the blue theme as well that we're going to go with. Once I had the panels on, I was able to really take a look at the space that we're going to have to be utilizing. I chose to use a dual bay XSPC res as well as the client wanted a DVD drive. Um, they actually wanted a Blu-ray drive, but unfortunately that wasn't in the budget. Um, so we are going to be using all three uh, five and a half inch, five and a quarter inch bays at the top, and we're going to be utilizing the lower portion with the rad and the um, the the one forty millimeter fans. Now, originally I wanted to go with a UV blue. I switched that up after I saw a couple of uh, builds online and. I decided to go with Mayhem's Pastel Blueberry. This was also because I really wanted to use a thicker tube. Um, I really liked the look of a, a thicker tube. So we went with compression fittings that were one half inner diameter and three quarters outer diameter. Now, again, because there was a budget to this, uh, we weren't able to go with angled fittings. Um, these were the cheapest compression fittings that I could get and originally I was thinking that I was going to paint them white but the chrome actually really went with the uh, few parts in the build such as the 780 um, that actually pulled out the chrome pieces. So right here we can see the XSPC block, the Raystorm, and immediately I knew that I was going to have to paint the uh, shroud around it white because it just it didn't go with the build so we had to paint that one as well now one of the things that I don't get about a lot of other builds is the lack of minute attention to detail so they will go as far as to paint everything you know a perfect color scheme but then they'll leave the graphics card um, you know IO shield silver so everything will be painted perfect and then you can see this silver IO shield uh, as well as you know screws or or other you know minute details of the sort uh, one of the things that I take a lot of pride in is making sure that everything um, even an ugly uh, DVD drive has been painted according to the scheme that we've chosen. I typically would not have a um, optical drive uh, in, a, in a case, but since this was one of the very few requirements that this client asked for, um, I felt the need to uh, make it look as good as I could. So here you can see uh, the first coat of paint on the XSPC um, uh, fitting and as well it uh, on the IO shield of the graphics card. It really does add a lot to the build. Even though it's very small change, it um, 
you know you can tell that the time has been taken to make sure that everything has been painted and is according to the uh, scheme that you are going for so as much as I hate the uh, optical drive I ended up trying to make it as good as it can look um, the next thing I wanted to do was um, make sure that the fans that I had were the fans that were going to stick out in this build um, as you can see here the white painting on all the components including the rad um, really changed the look of the, of, of everything um, even the optical drive actually doesn't stand out as much the fans that I decided to use were ones that I had never actually seen before I really wanted to get a blue blade with blue LEDs and um, it really really stuck out to me that these Cobras were exactly what I was looking for now I've never used these fans before and they were pretty much well the only ones that fit all my criteria there were certain fans that would be blue with white LEDs or they would have you know a black shroud around them these had like a smoked acrylic look to the shroud and the actual blue blades added a lot to the build itself blue against white was definitely the absolute theme of this build um so what i was trying to do was let the leds in the fans be the amount of blue in the in the build and then the rest of the white was going to be lit up by um, white LEDs. I wasn't going to try and put too much blue in because uh, I've seen a lot of builds that were oversaturated by blue and it kind of brings a dark, dark look to the build. So as you can see here, these are just a few components that I, I got that I'm going to paint white and uh, it's going to change the, the entire look of the build. Once I had all these components uh, ready to go, it was quite quick to throw them into the case. Um, I was debating originally whether or not to use the uh, graphics cover, um, the back plate. And only now do I realize how much it actually changes the look of the entire build. Uh, this is just a basic EVGA back plate uh, that I colored white. Um, painted it white with three coats and then two of lacquer and it really really stands out um, it makes it almost you know a focus on the build um, the two white components the ray storm as well as the graphics card really really allow the build to pop out and and give it that more spacious feel I'm really happy with how the uh, size of the um, fittings looks on this block they're just big enough but not too big and the white like I said um, you can see there's an LED that I've mounted and it's gonna shine on top uh, the blue 140 millimeter uh, fans on the top I ended up having to switch out I originally was going to use two 140 millimeter fans and uh, as you can see there's another LED strip at the bottom that I've mounted but um, I ended up having to do two 120 millimeter fans, one on the back, one at the top, and then a 140 millimeter fan at the top. Um, sorry for the camera shaking here. And you can see there, that's the 140 millimeter fan, and there's a LED strip there as well. So the blue will come outside of the case, and the white LEDs will be shining inside the case. So, so far it's looking fantastic and I'm really happy with how the white is really coming out. Once I was able to start feeling out the distance between the fans and where the uh, reservoir was going to be, I wanted to make the loops as simple as possible. So we had to make, I had to end up inverting the um, CPU block so it was as straight as possible. So. The inlet would go through right um, at the bottom and the outlet would come out through the top. 
as you can see the fan configuration uh, the 140 millimeter fan on the right and then the two 120 millimeter fans uh, fit perfectly and um, I wouldn't have been able to put another 140 millimeter fan in there which is fine because we don't need that much um, airflow it's already in excess of the airflow um, the graphics card backplate really stands out and you can't tell but because I painted the IO shield of the graphics card um, you know it's seamless it's just all white and you don't see any silver on the, the IO shield of the graphics card which is exactly what I was going for now because we've optimized so much of the space in this small case I was actually able to Dremel and uh, fabricate a 140 millimeter uh, fan placement on the bottom uh, this has actually enough room to have the radiator in the front and push pull config as well as that fan pushing air up directly into the graphics card now because we needed to use as much space as possible there was a uh, actual gap between the uh, optical drive and the uh, top of the case and I felt that this would be a perfect place to put the SSD um, I did not end up going with some, this configuration um, based off that I was unable to route the wires in between the fan and the, uh, the top fan there and the actual optical drive. So I had to find a way of mounting the 2.5 inch SATA drive and the SSD in somewhere that you cannot see them. The only place I was able to mount the um, hard drive the two and a half hard drive was um, up at the top so there was a small gap there that I was going to be able to use um, in order to mount this uh, two and a half inch hard drive uh, at the top so basically I was going to take um, take the hard drive paint it white and then use double-sided tape to mount it up to the top of the bracket here and that way it actually uh, wouldn't be in the way of any tubing it also wouldn't be in the way of uh, the radiator or um, any any airflow of the case and uh, the because the exit point of the um, hard drive is out the back it was very simple to connect it so you can briefly see here um, it mounted up at the top and uh, I gave it a couple of coats of paint, covered the I.O. and uh, made sure that there was nothing um, going inside the hard drive. It's actually quite in inconspicuous uh, in the place that it is and the lines actually line up perfectly with the bottom of that hard drive, uh, the five and a half inch bays. So I'm really happy with how that hard drive mounting uh, went and it saves a lot of space because I wasn't going to be able to uh, mount it out back as the cable management is already going to be difficult to uh, get the case on. So now that everything is pretty much well mounted, uh, we're able to take a look at the final um, routing of the tubing as well as the fluid that I'm going to be using. Uh, so here we're going to be filling the loop. Um, I have a nice uh, bottle that I can just squeeze into the uh, reservoir and I'm going to do my best to uh, fill the loop while filming with one hand and uh, putting in the liquid with the other. Um, I enjoyed using Mayhem's Pastel. This is my first time using the Pastel Blue. Um, one thing I did not do, which you should probably never do, is um, I didn't do a pre-test. Uh, so I didn't test the uh, to see if there was any leaks before. Um, the compression fittings that I used uh, were pretty solid, um, as well as uh, the tubing. There was there was nothing going to go wrong with the tubing. So even though these are only five dollar compression fittings, um, they really really uh, really created a tough seal. Um, as I was tightening them, I can feel uh, the solid feel of the compression fittings. Uh, something happened in this uh, filling of the loop that's never happened to me before. 
um, I was able to actually fill the entire loop without having to turn on the power supply. So if I just rocked the um, the case back and forth, uh, I was able to actually get the entire um, res as well as all the tubes filled perfectly with the Mayhem's pastel. Um, there was no need to turn on and off the pump. Um, you'll see shortly that I was able to actually fill the entire entire tubes without having to um, turn, cycle the power or do anything. Um, I'm not too sure how or why this was possible, but uh, because the res is actually in line with the CPU, so I'm not too sure how I was able to come over. But uh, either way, uh, it took just under a liter um, in order to um, fill this this loop and I'll take a, I'll show you in a second so you can see here that the entire tubes have been filled and this is actually before I've even turned on the pump um, there's a little bit of a, a bubble up there but with slight rotation of the case I was able to actually fill the whole rad and the entire tubes as well as the majority of the reservoir um, it was unnecessary to power cycle anything um, I don't know if that's the pastel or if that's just my configuration but it uh, it worked extremely well and uh, I definitely do not suggest um, if you're a beginner to turn on the pump without actually testing uh, beforehand so here's the first time of turning it on and you'll see that it, uh, it just pretty much will cycles all the way through and um, luckily there was no leaks so we were able to go right ahead into the cable management and other <coughs> connections. The one thing that I was hoping I would get a little bit more of uh, with this effect of the thick tubing um, and the pastel. I was hoping to be able to see the flow of the pastel similar to that of uh, the aura uh, that they sell mayhem cells. I do enjoy the look of the aura uh, crystals or the gold flakes or, or whatever they're called um, but the usage of it is impractical and literally it fades within weeks. Um, in a simple loop like this I was considering it but they don't work with the XSPC uh, bay reses, so that right then and there, um, obviously I wasn't able to use it. Uh, I am pretty happy with the pastel, and as you can see, it still got a few bubbles in it, but I just literally turned it on, so um, it's not, not too bad. Uh, the color is pretty much what I was looking for, it's giving it uh, an ice blue, and there's uh, still quite a few bubbles, obviously, but I just turned it on. So, um, But overall, with my first usage of Mayhem's Pastel, I used the concentrate. Um, so it was, uh, it made about 750 milliliters of coolant, and um, I think for this build, I probably used about five to 600 milliliters uh, surprising that the 140 millimeter radiator took up a significant amount but again we're using thicker tube half inch inner diameter tubes so that also takes up a lot of uh... now that that's done I'm able to finish up the window mod um, I was waiting on the black trim to come in so I can actually put together the um, acrylic and I used uh, quite a thick acrylic piece here um, because I had it in set so one of the things that allowed me to use this thickness was because it was beveled up and that allowed me to make it flush with the um, with the actual panel so it does come out very very nice and uh, you'll see how it accentuates the whole build um, and allows the light to come out properly so you can see here that it really opens up the case and really allows the entire internals to be 
viewed properly. It, it came out perfectly, exactly the way I wanted it. And um, slowly, case designers are actually starting to make big panels. Uh, I know Corsair's had it with their Obsidian series, and now I see NZXT with uh, quite big panels. Um, they're starting to understand that people take pride in their computers, and uh, this allows us to see what we've done inside. So with that part done, uh, we can see the final stages of the build. Um, the cable management was quite um, difficult at the back of this build, as this build was definitely never meant, uh, sorry, this case was never meant to have this many components inside of it, um, as well as powerful. You can see that the white interior and that big window mod really allow us to see exactly what this case could have been if thermal take had taken you know just a few more minutes to think about its future um, i enjoy the look of the case with the computer turned off and even more so with the computer turned on um, the thickness of the coolant doesn't allow the leds to come through the front which i kind of hoped that would happen um, however the front uh, push-pull fan config does give it a nice blue hue. Um, the top fans as well obviously glow. It's not over vibrant, but it uh, definitely uh, glows a nice blue. Um, the internal has three LED strips, and I was thinking that that was a little bit too much white, and I was going to replace one with a blue LED, but after looking at a few builds and contemplating the well the money to take it out and, and the time to to do it i i really felt as though the white leds actually let you see the internals a lot better um, even my cable ties i ended up matching with the blue of the coolant so it it really comes together um, as you can see here unfortunately the camera doesn't do it justice it, it actually really stands out. Um, it's like it comes out exactly the way I wanted it and Project Glacier is a perfect name for this build. Um, the internals are beautiful and uh, you can see pretty much all well everything that I wanted to accentuate about the case which is simplicity and um, you know just basic beauty. Now I rushed this build log a little bit because I had to get it to the client as well as I had to announce the uh, winner of the contest but uh, let me know what you think on the color scheme and the build and the simplicity and the mods. Um, I always enjoy and uh, read every single comment. I try to get back to any comment that's been posted and uh, I'm really trying to make something of this channel, um, maybe do some things that I've never tried tried before. And uh, those are all going to be witnessed in my Gold Rush build log. Um, so after this is done, I'm going to be starting up on that again and have an update on my Gold Rush build log. So thanks for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the future.